See, typically in, a, in an adult, if he can't hear, he'll tell you clearly, you know, I can't hear at all. And when you fit hearing aids and you test them by a simple test like a pure tone audiometry, where we make the adults sit in a soundproof room and we play sounds at different frequencies and we try and identify what is the level at which he can hear sounds. So in an adult, it's very straightforward to identify what is the level of hearing loss. And if the hearing loss is total or near total, let's say severe to profound, so high that he can't benefit from a hearing aid, cochlear implant will sort it out. The, the situation is very different in a child. Now in a child who is born deaf and is a few months of age, he's not going to tell you that he can hear or he can't. So we have to use a completely different technology to try and identify if this child can hear or not. Uh, we rely on tests such as brainstem evoked response audiometry or auditory steady state response audiometry. Essentially what these tests are is if we, we slap on headphones on the child's ear, play sounds into his ear and record brain wave activity through electrodes placed on the scalp here and here. By recording brain wave activity in response to sounds played into the ear, we can establish if the child's brain is hearing sounds. Because if the brainwave activity is normal, at normal hearing levels, then certainly this child can hear. But if the brainwave activity is poor or absent, then we know there's a problem. The problem could be that the child can't hear at normal levels, but can hear at higher levels. Or the problem can be that the child can't hear at all. We even do other complex behavioral tests called play audiometry or conditioning audiometry wherein by interacting with the child on several occasions we set up a pattern wherein the child gives us some kind of a response in response to hearing sound. This is called conditioning audiometry. So the child is conditioned to give out a particular response in response to sound. So whenever he hears a sound he'll give us that response and this test is again used to establish exactly what level the child can hear. If the child can hear at near normal levels all, all well. But if the child can't hear, then we know there's a problem. It could be a partial hearing loss or it could be a total hearing loss. We have another test called autoacoustic emissions where we place a very sensitive probe in the child's ear. And this can be done when a child is newborn. Immediately after birth, we do this test within the first day when we place this probe in the child's ear. The probe picks up some very sensitive sounds called autoacoustic emissions. If these are present, we go back knowing very well that the child can hear. But if these waves are absent, there is concern. And we carry on with the other test that I just mentioned, the brainstem evoked response audiometry or the auditory steady state response audiometry.